would be honored if you would join us. Greetings and welcome to another YouTube episode of Film Stories with me, Dan Cooper. This week I am going to look at a film story that's been rumbling along over the last week or so with fresh details just dropping um, over the last day or so, uh, courtesy of, of Dark Horizons, the website, movie news website in this case. So last week, um, our site, Film Stories, provided further information on Universal's cancellation of The Hunt, the Damon Lindelof scripted political satire that was due to release next month. Um, and this week, though, more information has continued to, to drop. So if you've got no idea what I'm talking about here, then I'll pop a link below to um, our story where we reported on Universal pulling the plug on the film, reportedly in response to um, a conservative media and political campaign. A sort of two-pronged attack from media outlets like Fox News and a press conference where, although he didn't name the film um, specifically, the movie was uh, lambasted by Donald Trump, America's president, and was made to bear the blame uh, for um, the mass shooting atrocities that have occurred in the USA recently, um, and also made to bear the blame for uh, a Hollywood that he described as racist. Conservatives, very unfairly, Hollywood... I don't call them the elites. I think the elites are people they go after in many cases. But Hollywood is really terrible. You talk about racism. Hollywood is racist. What they're doing with the kind of movies they're putting out, it's actually very dangerous for our country. So the film's director, Craig Zabel, uh, has spoken out just in the last day or so and said that he considers the film to be politically neutral. That's an important fact or an opinion, uh, rather, um, because um, the film's presumed content, and I say presume because most of the people speculating about it, including media outlets, including the president, haven't seen it, but are using it as a political weapon to attack Hollywood's output as, inverted uh, commas, racist. Um, what I think is especially problematic in this scenario, though, isn't the studio's decision to pull the movie from its release schedule. That um, it is laudable um, for the reason that they've given, which is out of respect for the victims and the families um, of, of these um, atrocities. The problem is the timing, is specifically Universal's timing in pulling the films. Um, let me go into what I mean. So Dark Horizon's original report stated that the studio had allegedly decided to pull the film from schedules before Trump and the right-wing media became involved. Mainly, they decided to pull it, as we just said, because of, of, of um, the, the shootings and because apparently they conducted post-shooting test screenings which made viewers feel um, a sense of discomfort. Universal have since spoken out on this particular matter and said that the test screenings for the film are actually amongst the highest ever for an original Blumhouse film. Um, but to some degree, this is this is normal, and obviously these aren't, this is not normal circumstances. But this is normal procedure to some degree from an image conscious film studio. You know, I use the term normal there very much in inverted commas because you, you can't really use normal to describe the ludicrous situation regarding the absence of gun control um, and the surrounding events and uh, and, and dialogue. But th the point stands: it, it's it's procedure to some degree for an image conscious corporation. Um, as far back as nineteen ninety nine. 20th Century Fox delayed David Fincher's Fight Club from release because of fears that it would be causally linked to the uh, the Columbine High School massacre, which, if I recall correctly, was was kind of one of the very first of, uh, of, of the mass shootings that America has seen um, uh, you know, over the decades since. Fight Club, if you recall, doesn't feature a fetishization of of, of, of guns in the same way that it appears of the a film like The Hunt may have. Um, I say that because, I mean, Fight Club was a film really, really with barely any, any guns in there. Um, so, yet yet Fox decided to pull it because they thought that the film's subtext uh, m might be linked. Um, and so we've got a precedent. Studios have before pulled films um, in, in, in reaction to atrocities like this. But either way, when it comes to the process of, of political censorship of film 
Studios. The most relevant story that kind of springs to mind is Sony's handling of the interview. So a story I'm sure you are familiar with, the 2014 satirical comedy, became infamous because Sony pulled it from its intended cinematic release in the wake of cyber attacks and pointed threats from the North Korean administration because the film, of course, uh, was a satire of, of the North Korean administration. Um, this is, going back, this is what the then president of the USA, Barack Obama, had to say about Sony's decision to pull the film from its schedule. Uh, Sony is a corporation. It uh, you know, suffered significant damage. There were threats against its employees. Uh, I am sympathetic to the concerns uh, that uh, they faced. Having said all that, yes, I think they made a mistake. Because if somebody is able to intimidate folks out of releasing a satirical movie, imagine what they start doing when they see a documentary that they don't like or news reports that they don't like. Um, or even worse, imagine if producers and distributors and others start engaging in self-censorship because they don't want to offend the sensibilities uh, of somebody whose sensibilities probably need to be offended. So just to, to reiterate there, he said, if somebody's able to intimidate folks out of releasing a satirical movie, imagine what they start doing when they see a documentary they don't like. There's more than a shade of irony present when you reevaluate that statement from the former president, considering that his words apply directly to what the incumbent president has just done, which is to intimidate folks out of releasing a, a satirical movie. If indeed if indeed that is what has happened uh, and, and here's here's the, the problem that i alluded to earlier on about timing universally are, are claiming that they had already decided to pull the film out of respect um, of the victims and the families of the mass shootings but their failure to pull the film before trump's intervention means that the narrative lies against them somewhat now in that regard. Whether intentional or not, whether the film, as Isabel, the director stated, was politically neutral or not, and, and remember, no one has seen it to argue otherwise, the, the timing of the withdrawal makes the studio look like they've lost confidence in the film and the film's neutrality, rather than looking like a withdrawal out of respect. Yeah, it was a supremely difficult situation to be in as a studio executive, um, uh, uh, but one that is, to some degree, uh, of Universal's own making. It is it is completely laudable to support the sort of incendiary social satire that films like The Hunt tackle. Part of those decisions are made with the aim of of flirting with um, controversial topics, to, to force oneself into the cultural conversation. And let's not forget, as, as studios, as corporations, make make money in the process as another Bloomhouse production get out did a couple of years ago for me that that's the standout film of 2017 but more pertinently to a company like universal it was it, it, uh, the hunt is, is a social political sat satirical thriller in, in a similar vein to get out produced by Blumhouse, who also produced get out uh, you know, only while Get Out channeled uh, Look Who's Coming to Dinner, The Hunt derived its plot from the, a 1932 movie, The Most Dangerous Game, where a hunter decides to hunt humans. Um, Get Out, I'm sure you, you know, has made back, according to thenumbers.com, over $270 million from a $4.5 million budget. That's, that's, um, that is not a small amount of, of profit. And my point here is that if you're going to, consciously push yourself in the direction of making films that make inflammatory social points whether it be for financial reasons you have to accept that if you if you're making those decisions for uh for financial reasons then you're consciously making them for artistic you're, you're making an artistic or creative choice alongside that and postponing or cancelling the film in in light of mass shootings is completely understandable perhaps even even laudable um but doing so in the wake of a, of a media and political blitz and bowing to, to, to pressure is less so, especially given now that the director has spoken out, yes, supporting the cancellation is a measure of respect, but flatly denying 
um, the, the media and the, and the kind of political angle um, that, that, that has been pushed upon the film um, and that he's been subjected to. The timing from Universal's point of view is, is unfortunate at best for free speech, if nothing else, um, whilst Universal are no doubt, no doubt looking to show respect to the victims of these terrible events. In allowing that their withdrawal to follow Trump's tirade rather than withdrawing it preemptively, it looks like a reactionary move, um, and, and, uh, which shows or suggests that they've lost confidence in the film and in the film's message. And when political forces can suppress satire um, and, and do so successfully, those forces will do so again and again and again. So we won't see the hunt, at least not for a, a while, and therefore won't be able to make a, our own minds up um, you know, as, as a society for some time yet, it seems. And whilst Universal's decision to pull the film is completely understandable and, and, and worthy of, of respect, um, the timing, a little less so, as far as this, this right is concerned. We'll be back here next week uh, looking at another film story. Uh, if you want more film stories in the meantime, please do check out uh, Twitter uh, at, film stories, at Film Stories Pod, Facebook at Film Stories Online. Uh, our website has details, that's filmstories.co.uk. Our website has details of upcoming issues of our print magazine um, and also a new print magazine, Film Stories Junior, written by the youngsters for the youngsters. Um, really, it's just a whole film stories world out there. Go out and find some more. Um, do like, do subscribe, and I'll see you back here next week with another film story. Cheerio.